Um, so hello, welcome. Um, this is not a van, as you may have noticed, unlike what we promised at the start. And I'm not alone, as I promised at the start. So hello, Maddie. Hello. Um, the, the van is not finished yet. Um, that's entirely my fault. Um, I thought you said it needed a woman's touch. Yeah, it needed. I was. I've been waiting on Maddie to arrive from Australia to finish it. Obviously, that's what it needed here, right? Um, but we're on the road for the 2022 MotoGP season, and we are currently stuck in a queue uh, crossing the border to get into Gibraltar for a little day out to see some monkeys and some you know that, military history. Did you know that John Lennon and Yoko Ono got married in Gibraltar? I did not. You yeah, see, you, you learn you, you, whenever you have a Beatles super fan with you, you learn all sorts, don't you? So yeah, um, today's plan, let's let's have a look if you can see. The rock is right there. And we are gonna go and explore on top of it where the monkeys live in a cable car and inside it through the uh, the old military tunnels because that seems like a fun day out, right? So step one on the tour of the giant rock of Gibraltar is getting the cable car to the top and then going to explore the tunnels underneath it because there are apparently 50 kilometers of tunnels left over from like 300 years of wars. Um, I was here last year. I went and did some of them. So I'm gonna go back today with Aussie company. And um, like, so, who's almost fallen down the mountain to her death. I'm fine. <laughs> Saved it. Um, so we're gonna go and do that, explore some of the tunnels and hopefully play with some monkeys because in case you didn't know, uh, Gibraltar has a population of Barbary macaques which aren't native, but were brought here by the uh, the Moors in like the 1500s, because they, they were originally from like just across on the other side of the rock, um, in the, what's the word I'm looking for? Morocco. Atlas Mountains, Atlas. in Morocco, yeah. So they're from just over there, which is the other side of the, the Strait of Gibraltar. Away, 21 kilometers away, we went yesterday and uh, looked into Africa. So gonna go and play with some monkeys, gonna get the cable car to the top of the mountain, gonna explore some tunnels, and um, have a fun day out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the sun's shining because it was raining earlier. Yay, sun! We love that. Actually, interestingly, like a bit like the like humans, uh, macaques seem to originate from Africa, and so seven million years ago there had, like, was a common ancestor, and the Barbary macaque, the one in Gibraltar, is the one that's most uh, close to uh, this ancestral form. So they were, according to fossil records, they were also widespread in Europe, but the population have declined to just be uh, in North Africa now. So the Barbary macaques are really found only in North Africa and on the rock of uh, Gibraltar. So again, according to genetic uh, analysis, they have found that uh, the macaques, I would say there are 24 different species. So coming from Africa, the Barbary macaque stay there, there is a population, and the others have diverged into these 23 different other species across uh, from India to Japan, uh, through Malaysia and to Indonesia. So in the Barbary macaques in Gibraltar, um, again, according to historical records, uh, it seems that they were introduced there by uh, Muslim inhabitants or the Moors before. And it was that before, uh, at least when the British uh, arrived in, in, on Gibraltar, the, uh, before the British colony, uh, the, the macaques were already there. So, it's most likely that it was introduced earlier that, than that. 
and that it was introduced by uh, by Namibians before. Oh my goodness! <laughs> You're making friends. I'm scared. <laughs> I mean, we as humans have colonized a lot of uh, environments and we are so expanding this environment. So we are uh, decimating and logging, for instance, forests where these macaques will live. Uh, this will create really different, uh, really highly conflict. And so we have like a loss of uh, the forest, which will prevent, will, will uh, restrain the animal to a certain area. Uh, and we, they will, for instance, use crops from humans in order to feed. So yes, and this is conflictual, and this is what uh, research from colleagues also is trying to assess how we can manage uh, these conflicts. Uh, and often it's by educating people in order that they understand the behavior of the macaques and trying to let them so uh, to preserve the environment and to protect the area where they are living. And so while uh, offering so the, um, the infrastructure for, for the human to get enough crops and so on. So this is something to tackle really and it's a big issue. Well, I mean, it, you know, it's, it's not a hierarchy like saying that, I mean, there is a conflict because two species are living together on the same space and they need to find their resources. So, uh, and of course, uh, macaques, as you said, we humans have much more um, uh, power to just have uh, and to protect uh, the crops and so on we have. Uh, and the, the macaques will be more chase in their in their environment, if it makes sense. Uh, so, so it's much more difficult, obviously. They have no power against us somehow. Uh, it's a really disproportionate conflict uh, between the macaques and, and, the, and the humans here. That is my hair. <laughs> Thank you. Hey. Oh. It's fine. They're too bold. Ow! Uh, oh, Not oh, the sunglasses. Oh. Okay, you're down to one. Ruthless. <laughs> you're down to one. Well, I mean, at the beginning, so macaques are quite curious. So obviously, if there is a new object, they might, and especially juvenile individual, might uh, like to interact with it. But recent uh, research I've shown, actually, it was published last year, uh, that, for instance, in Bali, uh, some macaques might use valuable objects to exchange uh, in, in an exchange uh, and in a bargaining way with tourists in order to get food. And the more valuable, they've shown that the more valuable the object, like for instance, wallet or cameras that are objects that are quite attractive for macaques and valuable for humans, uh, were exchanged uh, for having a high, highly valuable uh, food resource or food reward. Uh, so, and yeah, these studies have shown that the, yeah, the higher the value of the object, the longer the monkey will wait to get uh, a better reward. Hello, baby. Can I put you down now? Do you know where Maddie is? Do you know where my actual monkey is? He's about to leap. Please leave me alone. Oh, no, he's not. <laughs> oh, Christ, yuck. I, I don't think the study shows exactly, you know, the, the, the valuable of each, the value of each object. But yes, that's, uh, I mean, at least they seem to uh, have this different category showing that the interest in maybe, maybe the, the objects are larger or fancier because it's plastic. So this is all the factors we don't know yet. So if, if they can really value, uh, by say, the, 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 the object. But yes, that's, um, that's quite, um, quite uh, interesting for them. So, how was your monkey experience, Maddie? I feel violated. Why do you feel violated? They pulled my hair. <laughs> <laughs> Were they, they mean my, monkeys? They stole my sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> they pulled my hair. Were the monkeys mean like you? Shaking like a lady oh, like <laughs> So, they were so cute in the morning, but they go ape shit in the afternoon. Like, uh, I feel like there's an important lesson here about respecting the uh, I monkeys of Gibraltar. I didn't even do anything wrong. Yeah, but they you know. They just jumped on me. You know what it is? You know what, what it is? What is they it? They were young boys. <laughs> they just can't resist you. So what it is, is how we try to understand how animals perceive the world. So either environmental world and social world. Uh, so my background is basically I've studied biology um, as because as a child I was always interested in knowing how as a five-year-old I was always asking how these animals are thinking and then perceiving the world and I continue my study like that. I uh, did a PhD in neuroscience and, uh, and in animal behavior 
and uh, was uh, working currently in comparative psychology. So the interest of comparative psychology is really to understand what are the differences right, between the species and what shapes so these abilities of perceiving the world differently. Uh, so we uh, use two hypotheses for that. So we think that the environment, the, so the physical environment, will shape really uh, the abilities of uh, animals. So for instance, if you live in a complex forest with a different fruit, we expect the animal to evolve and gain some knowledge about this forest, right? Uh, similarly, if you live in a social group, uh, with others, you need to compete, you need to cooperate. So we expect also the animal to try to understand uh, intention from others, for instance, or to try to help self-regulate in order to cooperate. Um, so my last research really focused on the, so I'm interested in looking at whether humans are unique and to compare so that with our closest relative, which are uh, the non-human primates, so monkeys and apes. And my interest is really uh, in non-human, in uh, non-human primates and the, the monkeys, and especially the macaques. So the macaques are really an interesting group. They are really diverse among twenty-four different species uh, in the world, and they have been really. So we have found that some studies have shown that really they are highly intelligent. So they are able to use tools and to have innovate, to innovate, uh, to show innovative behavior, for instance, potato wash, washing, for instance, in Japan. Uh, and they live, they are really highly social, so lives in complex groups. And for me, these groups makes it really interesting. And according to the species, we have also different social tolerance degree. So some species will be highly despotic, uh, so not really cooperating with each other. There is a strict hierarchy and some of us are much more tolerant. And our last research has focused on this difference in social tolerance and how it affects how an individual cooperate or not with each other and how animals understand each other. Um, so yes, so this is the last research we have done. We have shown also recently that there is also differences in how they self-regulate. Uh, so despotic uh, species seems much more uh, uh, distracted uh, by any stimuli from the environment and have much more trouble inhibiting their, uh, their behavior compared to uh, social tolerant species who seems much more relaxed with that. And they will therefore cooperate much better with others within the group. They are really good uh, at understanding physical objects, for instance, or when you think of uh, urbanized environments, so they are really good at uh, spatial orientation, for instance. Uh, so they uh, can track really uh, different resources uh, easily. So they have a great, great spatial memory. I mean, there are a lot of studies showing in the forest so that they can track really individual trees. So you can imagine that there is a kind of a great memory for that, for the different aspects uh, that you could find in the street, for instance. Um, and uh, they have a, um, a really good uh, understanding of others. So as I've said, they are highly social, meaning that um, they so we predicted that they can really understand each other's behavior and up to the point to maybe each other's intentions. So they also study showing that macaques are really good at tracking gaze, for instance, so you know where someone is looking at. So for the congeners, but also for humans. So and within this uh, urbanized environment, uh, so it's really important because then macaques really know where a human is looking at, for instance or what kind of object they are looking at, or what kind of resources they are looking at. And there have been, for instance, some conflicts uh, uh, described in uh, temples in India, for instance, or in Bali, where macaques really will look at the object that the tourists have and will try to steal them, uh, basically. And this creates, obviously, uh, conflicts uh, there. We are trying to explain, I mean, Humans have, uh, so there is the hypothesis that humans have evolved like uh, as we are because we cooperate with each other. Uh, and uh, because of this, then we are much more tolerant so to some certain extent with each other. <laughs> uh, and compared to uh, species of uh, macaques, that's how we want to assess that. So 
we would uh, expect macaques that lives, for instance, in complex environment to be a bit more aware of what's going on and to have a better spatial memory, for instance, of uh, key food trees. Uh, but uh, in groups uh, where there is uh, really a highly social tolerance, then we are expecting them to be better, for instance, at cooperating to each other. So these are the ideas of now trying to observe and maybe introduce some experiments in the wild uh, just to see whether they are able to solve problems easily. So uh, we would expect that species that have better social tolerance will be uh, able to better solve problems together then the other species who are much more despotic, who are less keen of uh, working with each other or, or solving problems with each other. So this is the kind of area we want to, uh, to investigate in the future. So we are back where we started. We're, we're in the queue to leave Gibraltar. Which, I love the customs line. Which is thankfully, thankfully, thankfully going away um, as one of the like one of the like four benefits of Brexit. Um, that, that like there's basically been like four for the entire world and I think one of them is that they're doing away with the Gibraltar UK border you but realize as an Australian this makes absolutely no difference to me like yeah I know it doesn't but like for so the, like majority but of for the those world. of us but who it's struggle like very much a you problem. I know I know but for those of us who struggle with this anyway um so yeah we're stuck in a massive queue to get out we've literally been here 24 hours we have a great fun Gibraltar's great it's but attacked by too much not attacked yeah so the the monkeys Sorry. on the rock um, we, we play a driving game where you have to spot yellow vehicles. Maddie's winning by like a million at this point. So many. Um, we we got attacked by monkeys. I wouldn't call it attacked. I mean, two I'd of them jumped say, in your head. I would just say I had digestives in my pocket and they found that and then they jumped on me. Store your sunglasses. <laughs> Realized they weren't edible, threw them away. The whole thing, we got the whole thing. They're so cute though. <laughs> I love them. Um, the monkeys are, are interesting little animals. Um, living around the top of the rock. Some of them are huge. Um, what else did we do today? We went into the tunnels inside the rock. Yeah, they were awesome. Um, we only did a little bit of them because there's only a little bit of them you can explore, but there's like 50 kilometers of them. Um, there's just a colossal amount of, of still like World War II. The, some of them goes back to 1704, but there's there's a huge amount of, of World War II history here. Um, I, I read recently about uh, a room that they found that they, they knew had been there and they'd, they'd been searching for it for years um, local archaeologists uh, where it had been bricked up at the end of the war because the, the plan was if the Germans had invaded Gibraltar and captured it they would have bricked up the room with six guys inside with a year's worth of food and a radio so that they could uh, radio German ship movements back um, like the original big problem. Yeah. so th there's just there's a ton of completely unexplored history um, that we haven't even seen any of today, really, because it was quite a flying visit in between two MotoGP races, so um, we're going to have to come back. Can we skip the monkeys? <laughs> oh! We forgot the planes. Oh, yeah, we forgot the planes. So, if you've never been to Gibraltar, the, you drive across the runway um, of Gibraltar International Airport to, to get into the country. You Literally, there's traffic lights and you have to stop um, on the runway. We had to stop on the runway. There was a plane landing in front of us. Um, Do I pretend that you didn't line it up perfectly? So I genuinely couldn't have planned it better, but we ended up being the first car in the queue. So we, we saw a British Airways flight land directly, an EasyJet flight Easy take off jet, directly in yeah. front of us. Which was really really cool, and then and then when you go up in the tunnel, there's like a hot, there's like lots of holes where they where they where there were cannon emplacements. Yeah, during so the, actually, the we saw like wars. we saw a BA flight take off. Don't ask me my opinion on BA. That's another chat for another day. But it was cool. Yeah. So yeah, right. we'll be back. Yeah. Right. Passport control because she's nauseous, so we need to get some. She's good at this. Bye. Bye.